Welcome back, everybody, to the Filmmakers Roundtable, the podcast dedicated to films, filmmaking, and getting insight from filmmakers working in the industry. I'm Thomas. I'm Dylan. And I'm Ryan. So uh, before we uh, go any further, we have an announcement to make. We are officially on iTunes. The Filmmakers Roundtable uh, has been approved, and uh, you can follow us, uh, TFRT. I don't know how it got that name, but uh, hopefully we'll change that. But uh, yeah, you can go follow us on iTunes. And uh, for those wondering where our earlier episodes are, like uh, we're having some issues with SoundCloud. We only have the uh, limited version. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna hopefully with I. I'm not going to make any promises, but hopefully by the end of the month we'll have that worked out Mm -hmm. to where we can uh, chip in and uh, get the unlimited version so we can get our uh, other tracks unhidden. Exactly. So Because that does kind of affect our iTunes now, too. So be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes Mm -hmm. uh, and also subscribe to us on YouTube so that way you can be notified as soon as the podcast goes live on iTunes and um, on our YouTube, uh, we're going to start rolling out more content uh, mm-hmm. than just the podcast and the Friday show. Yep. Um, so be yep. sure to subscribe to us on all platforms. Which, by the way, sorry for the late upload of the Friday show. Where this is just one of the things that we're, you know, working on with this. This is one startup. of the kinks we're yeah. ironing. Yep. Out. It's okay. been a long week. It is. So dealing with tech issues and migrating from a Windows PC back over to Mac platform has kind of <laughs> been my delay. So that, this one's on me, guys. It's all right. We, we, we forgive you, Ryan. It's all good. So, oh, and yes, Ryan is back with us today. So, Woot. Ryan, anyway. do you have my socks? <laughs> Your socks? <laughs> yeah, didn't you hear me in the last episode? I, I told you to give me back my socks. <laughs> um, you didn't watch last week's episode. I didn't listen to it just yet. It was on my to-do list i was still Come finishing on, up man this is comedy you. this is called a callback <laughs> <laughs> okay so anyway so how uh, have we been yeah how are we doing so dylan uh how have i been i've been fine and dandy all things considered um this week's been a bit busy for me because uh i i'm a lot at work i've been ha- doing a lot more uh, projects with them video wise i've mm-hmm. uh we were doing a fourth of july video that we filmed around fourth of july but it's been going through the re-editing ringer for some time now. And I finally just got the last bit of changes that my employers need, what want requested. Right. So we got to see how well that's going to go. Hmm. Just did a tutorial for uh, for them based on a website that's going to be going live here soon. Uh, but that this isn't the time to promote that. Cool. But cool. also, I've been filming some content that you guys are going to hopefully see this week or huh. next week. Have you also edited the other content? The other content, it is still coming along. Again, I had to take my li- my projects <laughs> had to take a. Su- I, know. I know that that's been my reason for a while now, but yeah, so, it's but... just I, I, like I said in one episode before. I love the people that I work with at my job. They keep me all. They always keep me busy. But the issue is, they always keep me busy. Right. So uh, anyway, Brian, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, like I said a little bit ago, I'm just trying to work between transferring things from Windows to Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, the big hiccup has been um, file formatting um, mm-hmm. and getting things from Windows to Mac. Um, if anybody of you or any of you out there uh, know how difficult that is, uh, yeah. sometimes it's very time consuming. Because uh, recently, I just upgraded my MacBook from four gigs to sixteen gigs of RAM, and then from a mechanical hard drive to a solid state drive. So that's kind of why uh, I've been a little delayed on some of the content that I want to put out or um, why the far- Friday show for today, as of recording this, is a little bit delayed. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, I'm Tom. Um, I'm doing all right. Uh, also keeping myself busy. Um, and I guess since we all kind of touched into what we're working on, um, yeah, I've been working on with the actors. I've had a couple of Skype with the actors for Awaken. I've had a couple of Skype calls. Um, so, and I'm... Searching desperately for locations, particularly a hospital location, or I've been contacting like nursing facilities to use, or nursing schools for like their simulation areas. So, but have uh, any of them gone back? No. So maybe I'm just con- going through the wrong emails. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go research and try to find some other ways to contact them. But um, yeah. So <coughs> anyway, I'm doing all right. So uh, out of breath. So. <laughs> Well, it has been a long week for all of us, but Very now, long. so let's get right into the news. Yeah, but uh, one thing we want to note is that we're gonna try and we want to try and keep these a bit shorter, because uh, you know space and everything. Yes, definitely. And um, 
so hopefully we won't this won't go into like 90 minute podcasts i'll so, i'll keep tabs on our time i don't well, i'll put on like a stopwatch or something roger so, so we'll keep it to like whatever we can so anyway so well, let's get right into it into right. the news all right so uh movie news so um so uh, this is something we uh, kind of touched in before we started recording. Uh, Disney is still adamant on James Gunn not returning, but but however they're still using his script and everything. And there's a whole thing with Alan Horn. So um, and Ryan actually went on a bit of a a rant. Yeah, yeah a bit of a rant about how yeah. about so, how James Gunn is have is going is going to end up having his yeah. name. Oh, all over the credits. Yeah. Even if there's, even if he's not directing. Yeah. yeah. So my issue with this is like we touched on it a couple weeks ago on the show, um, where James Gunn will not be returning to the the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume Three project, um, at least in a director's position, um, will not be returning. Um, however, uh, when that happened, Alan Horn uh, came out and said that. Um, they were not aware of the like tweets uh, that he had made about a decade ago, uh, and then on top of that, he said like, "Oh, they're um, they don't agree with the James Gunn's views, and they don't line up with us here at Disney, so we're severing all ties with with James Gunn." But they're still using his script, meaning all over the credits, it's going to say written right. by James Gunn, and then you're also probably going to give him an executive producer role Mm -hmm. um and then on top of all things since you are breaking contract with james gunn you're going to be paying him out anywhere between seven and ten million dollars for him leaving the project on top of having to pay out for hiring a new director yeah and remind you just as a reminder this film is supposed to start shooting in the fall so we're not far off from that yeah why they would like I, I understand not wanting like they've already kind of put themselves in a bind and by what Alan Horn had said and just ran his mouth. I understand that. But at this point, I think that they just need to come out and say, well, James Gunn needs will just be returning to the project after long meetings and interviews and things like that because I, I don't necessarily know if the film could do well without James Gunn directing his own script because mm-hmm. if a new director comes in obviously he's going to want want to go in polish up the script add his own fingerprint on the project yeah a lot of people online were honestly asked th- asking about and thinking about um thor ragnarok director taika waititi to direct Ra- uh guardians 3 i think that might be their best yeah. case scenario yeah you know, the worst but, case scenario would be what happened to Francis Ford Coppola's Mary, she- Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This, yeah. I remember the script writer came out. Uh, for those who don't know, the script writer of that movie came out saying that was the best script he ever written, but the worst movie he ever saw. Hmm. I haven't seen it, so. Um, but uh, I've seen the. Have you seen his Dracula movie? It, they're both weird. Yeah, yeah. It's Francis Ford Coppola trying to adapt a yeah. classical monster story. Right. They're both weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but need I remind you guys too? Like this isn't the um, the first time that this has happened with a Marvel movie in terms no. of them like switching directors. So like with the original Ant Man movie, Edgar oh, yeah. Wright was yeah he, that, he had that, kind of written the movie um, and started directing a little bit, and then Peyton Reed took over. Well, that was in production hell since like what the eighties. It, it's Probably. been a while since yeah. that one's been in like, production. I know like um, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas, he plays Hank Pym. Yeah, 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 the old guy. He was he was the original back then when they were going to do it. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like... And then, of course, they went through production hell and then they had to change everything. Yeah, so Michael Douglas <coughs> actually, kind of off track from the news segment, but Michael Douglas at the time of like Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out said that he wanted to do like a an Ant-Man prequel uh, to something like that where he played young Hank Pym. Hmm. I get that Disney has the uh, the like the de aging technology, but to do a whole film, yeah, but uh, that that's more industrial light and magic than yeah. than Disney's. Although I mean, Disney and Marvel have money to do that, but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, do I do I need to mention General Tarkin, Governor Tarkin, <laughs> Rogue One, Grand Moff Tarkin? Yes. Um, but um, even then, it's like. I mean, with Rogue One, that was like 
I think a lot of people don't haven't really brought this up, but I think that had more to do with the voice because it's like that was that was yours. Um, because it's like I just whenever I saw Tarkin, I was like, okay, I see Tarkin, but I don't hear him. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, obviously, who can really match Peter Cushing's voice outside um, of Peter Cushing? Yeah, and it's like, or it's like with the animated series that sounded like him, um, like the Clone Wars or Rebels. Um, but it's like you know, with the with the Clone Wars and Rebels, it's like it's he, it's an animated cartoon. It looks like. Peter Cushing did. It has his likeness, of course, but um, with that, but with the movies, it's like it's different. So I would have preferred if they just got another actor um, and just put him in makeup because the guy, I, I think his name is Guy Henry. He looked like it looks a little bit like Peter Cushing. I'd say just put him in makeup and mm-hmm. be done with it. So, but like they did in Revenge of the Sith. Um, but anyway, um, but but yeah, this. But back to Guardians Three. Um, yeah, this is interesting because if they're still going to use his script, it's like because I mean they're going to have to. I mean if they're because they have a deadline. If they're supposed to go into production this fall, um, you know they can't. You know, and they're still going to use his script. You know, it's just like it, it just it just makes more sense to bring him back because you know I mean it's like they they're not going to like oh, totally like ditch uh, James Gunn's script. They don't have time to do that. They don't they don't have time to hire uh, let hire another act hire another screenwriter. Let alone give him enough time to rewrite it you know well Mm -hmm. and then i believe the film is slated to be released in may 2020 Mm -hmm. i believe is the the time frame they're shooting for it to get that first weekend of may right kind of like that how they've done the last couple years of infinity war guardians 2 civil war and so on interesting yeah it's just the yeah this we're gonna as if you can't tell we've talked about this for the past since like the first episode and uh, so we're going to keep up to date on this. So yeah. let's hope things develop and change. In a bit of lighter news, yeah, we've got John Carpenter, the original, the director and composer of the original Halloween, is coming back with a new soundtrack to the new Halloween film set to come out this October. Uh, he announced that a new original, uh, according to Pitchfork.com, uh, they, John Carpenter announced a new original soundtrack for the upcoming David Gordon Green directed Halloween movie. It'll be out this October uh, on the 19th. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see because of the Halloween theme being so iconic and coming from John Carpenter. Yeah. How does a guy who managed to make an iconic soundtrack for an iconic film like that do something completely different? How does he come how does he come at a new angle to something that he knows very well? Oh, so he's doing the... He did the other... He did... Yeah, John Carpenter, yeah. And he's coming back to do the other one? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I didn't... Did, did, you, did my explanation not make that clear? Well, okay. Well, I haven't followed much about Halloween movies because I'm not particularly interested in them, but I might see this one. This might be the exception, but... Yeah. And fun fact, this actually... this uh, According to Pitchfork as well, this is the first time Carpenter has been invo- involved with the horror franchise since 1982's Halloween 3 where they tried to turn it into an anthology series, which I would have actually been interested yeah. to see where that would have went. Definitely. So, But, um, yeah, that is that is interesting. Um, oh, and apparently they've got an actual teaser for the soundtrack. Hmm, interesting. Probably don't... Well, probably won't... Well, Copyright. We, yeah, yeah, we won't play that. Mm. But uh, check it out if you're interested. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. So, uh, and, uh, In fact, that'll be one of the links in the description. Yeah. So our next bit of news, uh, John Lennon's Imagine film... Returning to theaters with bonus features. So, uh, Dylan, uh, you you probably know a little bit more about that. Um, I actually don't. I'm actually a bit more in the dark about as much in the dark as you are because I didn't know that there was a movie called The Matching with John Lennon. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, according to Rolling Stone, RollingStone.com, this will be a re-release. The re-release will feature 15 minutes of previously unreleased footage of Lennon jamming with George Harrison. According to Rolling Stone, uh, along with Rolling Stone's pianist Nicky Hopkins and others, uh, the film, uh, and also from the same article, the film *Imagine*, which John Lennon and Yoko Ono co-directed and co-starred in, will return to theaters this fall with extra footage, as the uh, headline states. But I'm just kind of in the dark about yeah. this because I didn't know that there was yeah. a movie that those two made. Yeah, and keep in mind, return to select theaters. Uh, and they made this film and. Uh, this the couple made the film, not to be confused with the similarly titled 1988 film, in 1971 at their home in Escott, England. Hmm. 
Interesting. Huh. Features pre-MTV era music videos made from amateur footage for the entire track list from Lennon's Imagine LP along with a few songs from Ono's Fly. Interesting. I want to want to check this out. Yeah. There's actually they actually link to a bit of a, a a trailer for this, so that's another link to go into the description. But and, and I never knew this. I, I'm just kind of perplexed. I I knew I, I'm I'm a big fan of the Beatles, and I know about hard day hard days and night and all that and all all the yeah. films that they did as artists, but never knew about this. No, neither did I. So maybe that's because I'm more of a Paul McCartney fan out of all the Beatles. Right. So our our last final bit of news we want to touch on uh, Amazon wants to take on Hollywood. Well, they well they've got the money as you said, Tom. They yeah, sure we got the money. Yeah, we we talked about it like before we started recording. But uh, more specifically, according to finance.yahoo.com, Amazon is is in the running to acquire a movie theater chain, yeah. Landmark Theaters. Yeah, huh? That's interesting. Um, but yeah, it's um, and they're also doing like a, a Lord of the Rings series. Really? Yeah, and the budget's going to be like a billion dollars, which that's more than the Hobbit movies and the Lord of the Rings movies combined. So, and I think that's more than all of the Game of Thrones episodes so far combined. So far, yes. Yeah, because they that average episode of Game of Thrones is like seven million. I think um, so. Jesus. And I I think that might be more than uh, the uh, John Favreau Star Wars. Uh, TV show that he's working oh, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think they set around ten million mm. for that. That, that. that was about the budget of the original Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And so, hmm, I'm interested what they do with that. John Favreau is going to do with that, assuming mm. they're still going to do it, because you know, like I said, with the, all the stuff that's come out about, you know, Star Wars, you know, they've, you know, the, you know the the critical reception to the Last Jedi or the um, box office bomb of yeah, Solo. Solo. So, but. Um, yeah, well, this is interesting to see. So Amazon, you know, they've been on the rise. So yeah, they definitely have the momentum to do something like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They they have a, a number of shows. They like, they have Man in High Castle, which I'm not a big fan of. So um, and none of you have seen, but um, nope. Um, but you've probably seen it advertised on YouTube. Yes, I have. Yeah. So right before um, my Fred videos. <laughs> that's a throwback <laughs> i'm sorry all right uh the 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 old the old youtube viewer in me is choking yeah did you get rick rolled along the way yes i did oh. yes i did numerous times i i can remember uh, that's a story for another time but i remember when i was introduced to the concept of rick rolling yeah all right. Well, anyway, so um, if nothing else to say, bit of a slow news day because I, I, I'm, if it seems lackluster today, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I'll cut that out. <coughs> breathe, my brother, breathe. Okay, so Dylan's about to die. So. <sighs> okay, I, I'm, I'm back from the dead. I'm back from the dead. This is uh, Zombie Dylan. Zombie Dylan here. Okay. I'm sorry for the lackluster news today, guys, because there's really there wasn't really a whole lot of like big news stories outside of Disney not wanting to hire James Gunn. I yeah. I, I Tom and Ryan can attest. I looked through several pages mm. to find to see what we could find. I mean, we found. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about how uh, Adam Sandler is going to be making his A24 debut yeah. and well, Uncut Gems, but well. there's no information on that what that movie is particularly about. Well, A A24 distri- distributes it. Distributes. They they distribute you know, like indie films. Like they distributed Eighth Grade, which both of you go see, and everyone listening and watching this who haven't seen it go see it. Do it. Yes. Or Tom will find you and make you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Um. So if that's if nothing else, uh, let's move on to mm-hmm. movies we've seen. Fourteen minutes. So. Right, I saw a good. I saw a good helping of nothing. I, I also saw nothing. And didn't didn't have time. I've only been watching things at home. <laughs> really this week uh obviously infinity war came out yeah. and then the uh super duper effing cut of deadpool 2 nice so, mm, yes so um so since we we don't have much to talk about this will be a short segment but um let's talk about movies we want to see so uh ron what are you you're up for something so, so uh yeah. last week uh imax and marvel announced that they're going to be doing a 10th anniversary film festival where they will be showing all 20 
uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe films um, from start to finish in IMAX. For for some of these movies, it's going to be their first time debuting on IMAX, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and most IMAX theaters, if not all IMAX theaters, will be showing these. Um, the ones that I'm looking forward to and have already purchased tickets to is uh, 2012's uh, The Avengers and the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Two of my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe films surprisingly did not get to see in theaters originally. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. We'll probably do, like, an episode about that. That yep. time comes around. Mm-hmm. Uh, Once you prob- see Infinity War, Tom. I've seen Infinity War. Wait, you have? Wait. Yeah. Dylan, you're the only one that hasn't seen it. I have seen Infinity War. Have you? Okay, good. Wait, I was under the impression that Tom was the only one who hadn't seen it. No, I saw it. I saw it in theaters. I thought I don't did. really have any desire to see it again, but because I see these movies casually. But yeah, I've seen it. I'm so everybody confused. saw it. I'm sorry. It made two billion. One of four, four? movies yeah. to do that in I'm, history. I said I was sorry. It's all right. It's all right. We. It's all right. I forgive you, Dylan. <laughs> Okay, so um, movies I want to see. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, I was so adamant in my conviction about that. But you never asked me if I saw it. Well, I, I thought I mentioned something about Infinity War, about you seeing it before we started recording, and I thought you I, and you didn't correct me. Well, I don't, I don't remember you saying I never said it, <laughs> I, or I never saw it. Well, now I know. Now yeah, I know. Now you know. Pop quiz. When do you know what you know? Now. Good. I saw it four times. Oh, I'm sure you did. Ryan. <laughs> of course you did, Ryan. Of course you did. I bought, okay. I bought the digital ahead of time, and then I He's bought good, two well, he, Yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan buys like two copy, minimum two copies of every movie. Of every ever. Marvel movie. Yeah. So if he's got a hundred movies, he's bound to have two hundred. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so movies I want to see. Um, I'll touch on the the Marvel marathon. Um, I'll probably see uh, the first Guardians because I didn't get to see that in theaters back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, What else is there? I got Uh, the schedule pulled up right here. Let me see that. Uh, Might see Civil War again. Civil War is fantastic. For some reason, I only saw that once. Yeah. Um, Same. Um, might see the second Guardians. Depends on what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And um, you have two days to see that one. You have Sunday the second, and then mm-hmm. Wednesday the fifth. Right. Uh, yeah, those are probably the only films I might see. Maybe the first Avengers. Mm-hmm. I because I have I've seen that. I think that's the only Marvel movie I've seen multiple times, uh, other than the first Iron Man. Are there any on this list you haven't seen? Um, the first two Thors. But those are garbage. Yeah, we won't so. we won't talk about those. Uh, the like first them. Captain America, which is, I've seen parts of it, but I've heard it's like so so. It depends on if you like the war genre. I, I like the war genre, but even then, it's like, from what I've heard, it's yeah. Winter Soldier's a good one if you're available Saturday morning. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I might see that. Oh, Incredible Hulk. Yeah, that one. That's I'm, one on the list of its debut in IMAX. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know that because they're owned by Universal. Yes. Still, I didn't know they were gonna re-release that. Yeah, it's. I'm, I'm probably not gonna see that though. Yeah, it's one of two films that's not like Marvel owned, mm-hmm. quote unquote. Mm-hmm. It's Incredible Hulk and then uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming owned by Sony. Yeah. Um, I don't think this. I haven't seen um, Spider-Man Homecoming. I saw on Blu-ray. I didn't see it in theaters. Um, that one's a good one. Oh, yeah. It's a really good movie. Uh, Age of Ultron didn't see in theaters. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Guardians I didn't see in theaters. I'm going to see that. The first one. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't, don't know much else. So anyway. Uh, moving on from that, uh, I talked about this last this other movie I want to see, uh, Marwin. I uh, talked about that last week, uh, so I won't go into much more. Uh, Venom, I do want to see that movie. Me too. And um, Bohemian Rhapsody. I should have put that one down. I want to see that too. Yeah, yeah. 
So we 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 saw uh, Ryan and I saw a trailer for it when we saw Solo. So I'm just like I didn't even know it was coming out. It's probably it's you know one of the lesser known films like or lesser advertised films like um, Disaster Artist was. So and it'll probably play at that theater too. Mm-hmm. So 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 yeah, I'm definitely gonna see. If that. We can all three of us need to go see it. Oh yeah, definitely. So it's coming out in November. I think so. I think so. I can look it up real quick. Okay. Um. So. There's a couple others like the trailers I saw when I saw eighth grade, but I can't remember them because I played too. That theater plays too many damn trailers. November second, two thousand eighteen. Nice. Okay. So yeah, we definitely all got to see that. So yes. Uh, Dylan, what do you want to see? I want to go see the Happy Time Murders. Hmm. I yeah okay I uh, <laughs> don't know anything about it. It uh, looks it's, very it's, interesting. Have you? Do you know what Sausage Party was? Mm-hmm. Well, I think Happy Time Murders is going to be what Sausage Party was to... Happy Time Murders is going to be to Sesame Street and the Muppets what Sausage Party was to Pixar. Okay. The the raunchy parody taking the piss out of this particular genre of film. And Melissa McCarthy's in it. McCarthy. McCarthy, yeah. McCarthy? Yes. Okay. And I... Despite what people say, I I like her style of comedy on yeah, some things. She she can be annoying sometimes. She's funny. For me, she's kind of she's kind of hit or miss. But when she hits, she does get me laughing. Ghostbusters. <laughs> I didn't see Ghostbusters. I don't so want to see tell. Ghostbusters. I, I I don't know how, but I have it on my movies anywhere. You get it for free when you get movies anywhere. That's how <laughs> bad it is that well, they I, just include it. Oh, I I also have Ice Age. Yeah, you get Ice Age. You get. I don't, I don't um, get that. Ghostbusters. Answer is it? Answer the call, or something. I, call? I that, Those are the only two I had when I got it. And then if you link another account, you get like three more movies. So there's you get like Big Hero Six, um, the Jason Bourne, and like one other movie. Yeah, but uh, Ghostbusters 2016. That could be a commentary we could all do. Uh, oh, Ice Lord. Age is a commentary in its own or an episode oh in itself. I've, oh my god, I haven't I haven't seen that in like 15 years. So, um, anyway, uh, besides the Happy Time Murders, I want to go see Christopher Robin. Mm-hmm. I've heard, I've heard your take on yeah, it, Tom, yeah, but yeah. I do want to see this yeah, for myself. Yeah, yeah, I, I said this in last week. You should go see it. Um, you know, just form your own opinion about it. Like I said, as far as Disney live action renditions, mm-hmm. because this one isn't really a remake of the other films, like Beauty and the Beast of the Jungle Book. But as far as that goes, it's probably the best. Um, I wouldn't call it horrible or really terrible or anything, but it's so so. Yeah, so. it's not doing that well at the box office, from really? what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Like, I I, th- I think it's on set to make its money back because okay. this is, d- doesn't come across to me like I want to see it, but it doesn't across yeah. come across to me like a super high budget movie. No, I don't think it was. Um, one reviewer said it's like lower budgeted than like most of. Disney's other big projects. Um, it was seventy million dollar budget. Oh, okay. And then yeah. box office. Right now, looking up on box office. As of right now, fifty six million. Um, yeah. So it it should be on pace to kind of hit break even. Yeah, but is it's, that with global? Um, that's office? that's domestic box office. Uh, yeah. It, so. It, Worldwide, sixty-eight point nine million. Uh, no. So it'll make its money back. Just barely. But it's not going to be profitable, though. Just, so. They're probably going to make enough just to break even. Yeah. yeah, but Disney's already made enough profit off of yeah. Infinity War to make up for Solo, Christopher Robin, Wrinkle in Time, and a couple other movies. Yeah. Well, it's like I think we all need to keep in mind is like because like when we talk about like Disney, like Disney released movies, you know, it's like we have to think about who actually made them. Because, like, with, with, like, Solo, Lucasfilm made that. You know, Disney just released it or distributed it. Or, like, with the Marvel movies, Marvel makes them primarily. And Disney mm-hmm. just kind of okays it and distributes it. Uh, obviously, with, like, Christopher Robin, the, you, know, uh, you know, Disney actually makes those movies. So, um, but, yeah. So, um, so we, we just got to keep in mind what, if what or if they have any creative input on that stuff definitely so but anyway now besides christopher robin i want to go see venom when it comes out it yep. looks interesting i just want to see how that'll go right yeah, my and, thing oh go ahead dylan oh no go ahead i was going to go to 
I was going to go to something that I didn't write down, but it's a year away. Uh, 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 my thing with right. Venom, like right now, is that the trailers, at least from what I've seen from the trailers, what kind of plot or substance does this movie have? Like, obviously, it's a Tom Hardy movie, so it's like he gets he gets hit with the the, the symbiote or gets mm. like it is infected or whatever with the symbiote and he kind of becomes ben- venom and right. there it seems like they're making like the big like doctor guy at the life day foundation or whatever for like that that's the main villain right. it does but, look like a collection of oh this is just things that happen to him while he's venom yeah right. and then like obviously they're hiding that woody harrelson is in the movie like he's the only one on the imdb imdb page that doesn't have like a specific like actor role or character name Hmm. um yet on there like i think they're just hiding the fact that he's playing carnage Mm -hmm. i was about to say i was i was about to say maybe he's playing carnage could be yeah and i i think it's fine that they're hiding that Mm -hmm. but (sighs) kind of like how they hit luke skywalker yeah force awakens like maybe both metaphorically and literally Like, maybe show a little bit or show a little bit more plot execution for this movie. Because it's like, if... I don't know. If Venom does well, then Sony... Like, mind you, like the Sony Marvel deal with Spider-Man is going to be up soon. Uh, at the last film is um, Spider-Man Far From Home, unless they renew that contract. Yeah. Um, if Venom does well, then maybe they do their own Spider-Verse without, without Spider-Man. But if it bombs, they're like, okay, well, we can't do a, a Spider-Verse without Spider-Man. We're going to take him back after Far From Home. So so Sony's making Venom? It's like, it, or is it solely them? It's solely them? Sony making Venom Ugh. because it's not going to be canon to the MCU. Oh, right. They've been kind of rocky on that. Like at one point, I think they said, yes, it is canon. And then at another point, they said no. Mm. And I think they might be waiting to see how it does. Ugh. But guys, 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 we need, we we all have to remember the best Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man 2, you have Spider-Man 1. <laughs> I think Spider-Man 1's good. I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but, uh, but the, the I have same... fond memories of it. It's nostalgic, but it has not aged well. Yeah. And CGI-wise, especially on 1, it hasn't aged well, but that's a discussion for another time. But, I... even, but even how it looks, like it looks like it's from the early 2000s or the 90s. And I think that it, until like the second and third movie, they switch to an anamorphic frame, which looks a lot better. But anyway, that's a that's another topic. Yeah, I think I think that uh, one last thing on that. I think that has a bit of a gives it a bit of charm, but that's just me. But yeah, I understand. Um, to the movie that I was wanting to talk about real quick, it's a year away. It's been getting a lot of traction on Twitter and its particular fan base. I'm talking about the mean blue speed machine, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh yeah, that's getting. Yes, they so. that is coming out. Like Twitter, just to give you an example of how a buzz Twitter, uh, how a buzz the Sonic fan base was on Twitter. There was a picture released from supposedly the set that they're filming on, and it has a sign that says Green Hill. For those who aren't familiar with the Sonic games, the very first level in the very first game of Sonic is called Green Hill Zone, and everyone's thinking, ah, oh, this must be from the set. This must be from the set. And there was a lot of the back and forth wait, wait. about that. It's a live action movie. Live action CGI hybrid. Okay. Then. It gets oh Tom, it gets better. It's gonna be a buddy cop movie. Moving on. <laughs> to <laughs> like, moving to like it, here's something I've noticed. One last thing about the Twitter, uh, sure. everything on Twitter. It seems like every new piece of information they release about this movie, the Sonic fan base goes one way and then the next. When they heard about it was going to be a buddy cop film, they went like, what is going on with this movie? And then they released the actor who was going to play Sonic's voice, and he uh, he plays one of the uh, I, one plays one of the nephews on the new DuckTales. I can't remember which one. But people were putting his voice against uh, Sonic's uh, picture of Sonic, and they were saying, you know, this could work. And so it's back and forth, every new piece of information. It sounds like the Star Wars fan base. I'm trying to <laughs> find the picture. But I, it links me to a Twitter account, and the account is suspended. Ugh. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the Star Wars. But there's a cop car. It's one of those hometown, really fancy, white picket fence dress signs with, okay. welcome to Green Hill. All right, let's 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 move on. We're about 15 minutes in. So 
so let's move on to dis- to our discussion segment on cinematic universes. Uh, why some work and why others don't. So, let me... so um, yeah, there's been plenty of attempts in this past decade to launch cinematic universes of anything. Uh, obviously, the Marvel Cinematic Universes and DC Cinematic Uses- Universes come in, uh, come to mind automatically. But then there's also uh, the failed ones, uh, most notably the um, Universal Monsters yep, and the uh, Ghost Corp. Cor- Cor- oh boy. Yep. So the reason why in, and and Star Wars. We yeah. Say. Star Wars. I would say like. And I was watching a, a YouTube video, which kind of sparked my idea for this discussion, is, like, there's, like, one person, like, so Marvel, uh, obviously, is the best model or best reference for a cinematic universe. I don't think anybody can argue with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing that they have um, that no other universe has or no other cinematic universe has is Kevin Feige, one person who kind of has the reins and control of making sure of little minor continuity things are kept throughout the entire movie uh, franchise, um, whereas like other movies um, or other franchises don't have somebody keeping like facts straight or um, keeping same tone throughout. Right. Um, or like little minor nods uh, throughout the Marvel Universe that tie back to other yeah. things um, is kind of what Kevin Feige does. I think they also have the problem that any M- any MMO has when it tries... I, I, people call this the World of Warcraft issue. Mm. Well, that, that, that's not the official term, but that's how I'm going to describe it. Any MMO that's tried to be World of Warcraft has failed. They'll get yeah. they'll get some steam, but then they and eventually like, crash and like, burn because... Most players, they already have their World of Warcraft. Why would they go to another one? Yeah, like Star Wars Galaxies, for those who remember that. Uh, I never played it. We never could figure out how to get it installed. But it's like, like it got some attention. Like it was like people loved it. But then the the developers kind of screwed it up and everything. Like they added like features that kind of diminished the game. Um, I don't know the full story because I haven't played it. But uh, I've just I just know from what I've heard, and then it just kind of fell off the radar. So um, I'm not even sure if the servers are still active anymore. Or well, they might be, but um, but yeah, I get what you're saying, Dylan. So um, but yeah, it's it's interesting to like you know y- you know because everybody wants to be Marvel. All these big companies they have these uh, properties they want they want to be Marvel. They want to you know they want the the money essentially. And um, I guess another one we could call this is. Jurassic Park, or Transform and Transformers. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. especially with Jurassic, especially with Jurassic World. Now, I now I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that film, and I it didn't the first have, one. Yeah, the first Jurassic World I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Fallen Kingdom. That's where the cracks. Start, that's where the cracks appeared appeared for me. Uh, cracks, more like earthquakes. <laughs> but. I it's I I remember back in the day when DC was starting to do their whole mm. cinematic universe yeah. and I remember the general discussion always went back to the same point like and Ryan's touched and I, we touched about uh, touched on this about uh, about this in uh previous episodes DC tried to play catch up mm-hmm. they didn't mm-hmm. want they didn't want I, I think it uh, also I, I think this might tie into another point about why some of these universes work and some of them don't is the mentality that one goes into with it. Mm-hmm. DC went into it with the mentality of let's play catch up. We want to be here. We don't without um, without putting in the work. Rip yeah. Toby Maguire. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 Toby, best Spider Man. <laughs> oh, 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 Ryan, you have your thoughts on Toby. Yeah, I do. I really hate Toby Maguire. I don't. I don't hate him, but. Uh. Yeah, but anyway, um, okay, that's a discussion so, for another yeah, time. Yeah. Oh god, yeah, who's the best Spider-Man? <laughs> okay, Tom hey. Holland. Yeah. Okay, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, it's like what you said about DC. It's like they, I think they have sort of caught up. I mean, yeah, their films are not spotless now. Like Wonder Woman was like the big step, and yeah, that movie's not perfect by any means, but it was the first like, wow, okay this could work so and i know a lot of people didn't like justice league it's a frankenstein of a movie yeah i liked it for what it was 
Um, I, I had a few issues with. I, now I didn't have that. I didn't have that many issues with Justice League, but there was one way that if I were at the helm, mm. I would have changed a particular thing with Superman. But that's a discussion for another time. But yeah. I can definitely see the Frankenstein nature of that film now that yeah. you describe it as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the thing with DC is like. Um, they didn't take the time like yeah. Marvel did to yeah. invest into the characters and establish the characters. Yeah. Because, um, like, if you if you look at the the Marvel history, they did Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, um, Iron Man two, Thor, Captain America, the first Avenger, and then they did the Avengers. That was Avengers was the sixth film in the franchise mm-hmm. after they had already established that. And by the time we got to the Avengers, the only person that they hadn't really introduced a whole lot yet was Hawkeye. Mm. I know that he was in the first Thor movie a little bit, um, but like they, they took the time to really ex- establish and flesh out characters mm. instead of like DC. In the yeah. very second movie, I understand we don't need an origin story for Batman. We don't need yeah. another story because we just came off of the... I, although I would have much rather seen a Batman movie. Yeah, not with, so much an origin Affleck, story. Which are, are they still doing I Affleck? think they are. I know Affleck's not directing it anymore. Which yeah, I think sucks. Matt Reeves is. Affleck. Yeah. Mm. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, and then... And so like Even still, but the, the Avengers, all the big crossovers in the Marvel Universe... Those were written to be their own movies at the same time because I mm-hmm. know a friend who didn't follow a lick of the cinematic universe before he saw Infinity War, and he still enjoyed it. Same, like I, I haven't. There's something about. Yeah. There's also there's a ta- there's all there's a talent to writing something that no one someone can come in without knowing everything else that came beforehand and still enjoy it. There's a talent to that, and yeah. and I think that's something that. Uh, man, uh, that uh, Batman v Superman, and I think the Justice League in certain parts kind of uh, uh, kind of missed. Yeah, so. yeah. Like uh, the good thing, like I'm looking at all of these, the the list of the Marvel movies from the IMAX marathon. But if you if you really think about it, just about all of them, like the if you were watch to say watch like just the Iron Man trilogy. They stand on their own, mm-hmm. but they can also connect to this other universe. Yeah. If you watch all the Avengers movies, they stand on their own. Yeah. Ant-Man, Thor, Cap, same thing. Mm. Um, but it's nice that they interconnect with each other instead of, like with DC, I don't know. Like the, There's a big issue like in my head about not like taking the time to flesh out the characters. Like All yeah. of a sudden... We're spending a lot of time in Justice League explaining, okay, like we get a little bit of an origin with Flash. We get a little bit of origin out of Aquaman. We get a lot more, like, fleshed out, um, like, origin of Cyborg in that movie. Yeah. Which, fine, do one origin story, not three. Yeah, I think, like, Flash, since this is not, since that Flash and the Justice League's not connected with the TV show, mm-hmm. I think, okay, okay, yeah, you have to explain a little bit of that, and, because I haven't seen the TV show. It's really good. I'm not interested, but, um, I think that was, that was fine, and he, he worked for the most part, um. He's definitely got a high IQ, didn't you see? He was watching Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. But, um. Yeah, I think he, for the most part, worked. Um, you know, he was mostly comic relief. Because um, they had to make him different than the Grant Gust and CW Flash. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, he was fine. I like Cyborg. I could have used more development of him. See, like, again, with a movie. So, like, like the whole part where his, he's, like, his dad, it wasn't his father was experimenting on yes. him. And I was just like, well, that would have been a, a, a good, an interesting movie. I think I think the biggest issue I think also another big issue with DC is that like going back to what I said about how someone could watch Infinity War and not be too lost mm-hmm. like they can still enjoy the movie with uh, DC it seems like every new film you need like there's way too much importance put on a like on each new film like you need to see this to understand yeah. what's coming later and uh, like I didn't I hadn't seen Batman v Superman or Wonder Woman by the at the time I saw Justice League um, I of course seen like reviews and stuff, but um, and I got through Justice League fine, um, so I don't think that's really an issue. Although I will say, like for Justice League, 
and I think hopefully they go they keep going in this direction with DC is like I think this is that was the first time they got Superman right um because like he actually cares about the people you know like he's carrying the, the freaking building away from the blast zone I'm just like okay DC keep doing that that is so suits. I know that I know they're, they're, they're trying to like completely erase what they did before or like I, don't, I think Josh Whedon what Josh Whedon was trying to erase what Snyder and Goyer did before so so and yeah yeah, and like the big thing is that you also have to like structure it properly. Mm-hmm. So I, I understand like Wonder Woman did well; it was very well received. Yeah. Um, but I think that it should have been released or done before Batman v Superman. Yeah. Because like if you look like if somebody were to go out and purchase a Blu-ray or a DVD of Batman v Superman at the moment, um, they would literally see Wonder Woman dead center. But if you look at the timeline, not a timeline, but like a, a, the order in which those movies came out, yeah, Wonder Woman is very much introduced in that movie, and I think that they should have structured the DCEU as you can start it with Man of Steel, then go to Wonder yeah. Woman, Batman, Aquaman, and then you could do Batman v Superman, and in between yeah. Batman v Superman and Justice League, which are crossover movies, yeah, you could do do the Flash. And mm-hmm. then we'll do Justice League, but not need to introduce Aquaman or Flash because you've already established them in earlier film. That's when you can kind of take a little bit more time to establish Justice, the cyborg in the Justice League film. Yeah. It pays so. to have a structure and yeah, not and not. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of a witty metaphor. It pays to have structure and not try and not throw something at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah, yeah. and then also note that I did not include Suicide Squad. Yeah, and then nobody does really. Is it that didn't seem like it was in the same universe, was it? It, it, it is. It, it is. is. Or did you was, see? Oh, oh yeah, that yeah. Was Affleck's Affleck, Batman. Affleck's Batman. Affleck's Batman, isn't it? But Affleck Batman. But it's like still, it's like, or is it still going to be included now because of how that movie did? The only thing, I, the only thing my dad and I remember of that movie is uh, the soundtrack yeah. because they played "Unfortunate Son" and that really got my dad into. Uh, the soundtrack we actually picked it up yeah the best parts of that movie is margot robbie as harley quinn yeah and will smith as deadshot oh yeah best parts of the movie i didn't mind jared leto as joker but the way that the trailers made the movie seem is that joker's the main villain and not enchantress i wish we got more of leto's joker yeah definitely although he was a he was a total douche leto was a total douche (laughs) so what didn't you see the nostalgia critics review of it? No. Oh, wait, I, 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 Suicide Squad. I believe I have, but how is he a douche? Well, did, didn't he mail? There was a story coming out that he mailed like dead animal, dead rats to like the cast members because that's what the Joker would do. It's like no, the Joker kills people and blows up bridges. The, the, the Joker would have sent laughing gas or something. Yeah, but yeah, he, like a or a pistol that shoots out a flag. Yeah. Not dead yeah, rats. He yeah. Did. Yeah, he was doing like a method thing, but really he was just being a giant douche. But I think that I think that, that Jared Leto's portrayal of Joker would have worked better if he was uh what was it? <sighs> Jason Todd. Or at least one of the Robins that was driven crazy by Joker. I don't know that version. I I, I, I like I said, I see like the superhero movies casually and i know very little about its source material but yeah like, yeah there was a whole plot line where one of the one of the robins jason todd was basically tortured and became joker for a short while huh. and they really could have done that if they oh, did yeah. like a batman and aren't, movie aren't they doing a robin movie that i'm not sure of because Robin's gonna be in a future movie you see in batman v superman where like you affleck's batman is looking right at like the old Robin suit. Oh, and yeah. it's jokes like, on you, bats. Yeah. Great, yeah. great scene, by the way. Which so you you see like the I think it says like ha 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 or the the jokes the on you line. thing, and uh, it's written on there. So they've established that Robin is dead in the universe or not around or whatever. But which Robin? Yeah, they which Robin? Which and, and people? That's what fueled a lot of people to say uh, it was Jason Todd. Could be. 
Yeah, that, that, that actually kind of doesn't make sense now that you told me that. And that's why they need to take the time to establish yeah. their characters before yeah. jumping well, into big crossover movies. Well, do you see well, the point we keep coming back to? Well, like <laughs> that, like that, like the whole like Joker thing with the Robin, that kind of worked. Assuming they're not going to do that with whatever film he's going to be in now because there was a poster released of Robin. So, assuming that's going to be a different Robin. Oh, yeah. Fuck Batman. Yeah. Or, or maybe he'll turn into Nightwing, because... Uh, I've heard rumor of Nightwing. Yeah, yeah. That's been kind of floating around for years. Um, Notice that'll be the only... That'll be the closest thing we get to a Teen Titans movie being... For now. Live action. For now. We may. We, who knows? Um, but yeah, but the... Um, we can make this go on a little bit longer, since this is our discussion part, but... Yeah. Um, we can talk about, like... The the other ones that didn't work, you know, or ooh, like okay, let's talk about like Star Wars because that's kind of on the fence as of right now. Yeah, they're trying to build a yeah. bigger universe. Which, if you would have said like ten years ago that, like, that Star Wars was trying to build a universe or expand its horizon of a universe, I think more people would say that Star Wars has the better chance of being more successful than like Marvel. Yeah. Because oh yeah, they had a literal yeah, expanded, expanded universe. universe. Yeah, yeah. So it's like books. okay, that just makes perfect sense. Like it's like can... it was like pre-made for something like this. Yeah, but it's yeah. like people. But it's like now it's like people are saying it's like well they do that and yeah there was like the books and the TV shows. It's like but now like in the theaters it's like it's nothing special anymore like it used to be. It's kind of people are saying it's just another franchise. Maybe because. Uh, oops, sorry. I managed to type something out. Uh, I think maybe, maybe the issue is is now that they're putting special emphasis on it now. When in rea- when before they didn't. Yeah. Like like even even the even though the prequels do have connections to the original trilogy, it, initially what the goal of George Lucas was to tell the story of Darth Vader yeah. and all those connections later on into into the original trilogy are just like are just that just little nods. Yeah. But the main focus was to tell the story of how Anakin became Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. if we rewound to like 10 years ago and or even to the point where like when Disney bought Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. like ask yourself this for, like in the perspective of that um, that long ago. Mm-hmm. What film would do better? A movie about Han Solo or Ant Man and the Wasp? What film would you think would do better at the box office? I would, I would say Solo. Everybody, most yeah. people would say Solo. Oh, although even back then, like I'm trying to think back to where my mind was in 2012. I because I, I didn't really want a Solo movie. Um, I liked it for what it was. You know, mm-hmm. it was nothing special, but it was okay. It was decent, but. I don't, I don't know if even back then a solo movie, but I get what you're saying. Like, back then, like, when I heard, like, there was going to be another Star Wars movie, Episode 7, I was I was hyped, mm-hmm. you know, like everybody was, to see it. So, yeah, that is interesting. So, you know, that, you know, nowadays, like, Ant-Man doing better than, um, or, well, Avengers, and it opened against Avengers. Oh, oh yep. it came out a little bit later, but Avengers Infinity War, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, and like, then, and like 2012, people were still kind of on the fence about Marvel because like they had only been around for a few years. They've had one Avengers film. Yep. So and that's when they were starting to kick off. So, yeah, it's interesting. And then we go to Universal where they tried too hard and completely yeah. forgot the point of their monsters. Yeah, and I, and I talked about this on another episode, but it's like if you want to do like a cinematic universe with these horror characters, okay make them horror movies that's what they originally were the monster mash didn't come later until later until later in their lifespan yeah but even like still then um because that totally gone. so i'll come back to that yep. okay like going back to the thought though like my original thought of like why they work and why they don't uh like obviously marvel has kevin feige he's mm-hmm working with all the writers he's a pr- executive producer on every film so he's he's got his hand in literally everything of making sure things go well and uh working out with the directors and making sure that they all have their own vision i 
don't necessarily think Star Wars has that right now. Um, like because, like, going back to the announcement when they said that Ryan Johnson was going to be doing his own trilogy, mm-hmm. they didn't ha- know what it, what it was about. As far as I'm aware, in that announcement, the way it came across to me is that Ryan Johnson's doing a trilogy. We don't know what it's about, but we're just giving him free reign to do what he wants. Wow. You know. I mean, if it, if it's like something totally different, like in a different time period in the Star Wars universe, that's fine. Mm-hmm. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. So like a thousand years before prequels or a thousand years after the sequels, fine. You can have free reign. Or the time between episode six and seven. Mm. And that, uh, well... Just, Maybe just play Battlefront 2 for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, anyway, I remember what I was going to say about the Marvel Cinematic Universes. The, the Mummy, awful movie, but and that was really like an example of a studio trying to cater to like a foreign market. Because like, one of the things I think the Transformers movies that's also have is like, um, it doesn't matter how bad they do here in the United States domestically worldwide if it succeeds in china because you know the transformers movies do really well that's why they keep getting made so um we have by the way we have nothing against the chinese but don't don't see those movies please so but um although uh, unlike transformers the mummy didn't do very well over there so because apparently um and back to what i was saying about uh, make them horror movies if you're going to do the cinematic universes but you know, because the China, because if they're just catering to the Chinese market, because th- these were the same people, the same people who one of the persons who wrote the Transform Transformers two, and I say one of them because there was like this like those movies had like fourteen writers, which no, you know they you know wrote wrote the Mummy, so yeah, and you know that's why you know they appeal to that mark. They're trying to appeal to that market, you know, you know. Because like it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter how well they do here or how badly they do here, as long as they do well there, which they didn't do well there, thank God. So, but yeah, so that's what I'm, that's what I mean. So, I realize I rambled on a bit. So it's okay. It's fine. Right. That's what this discussion is for. Yeah. So, um, and uh, if we want to touch on the Ghost Core. <laughs> or should we? That, that I mean, I feel like that that could be another topic for another day. Because that was kind of that was kind of dead in the water to begin yeah, with. Yeah, uh, we could. Uh, yeah, that will start with like Ghostbusters three or something. But we can, <laughs> we could all do a we could do a commentary of twenty sixteen. So, and and do and hey, well let's balance that out. We'll do we can do like a we can do like a review. We can all watch the first Ghostbusters, review it, and then do a commentary of the twenty sixteen one. So that'd be interesting. Back to back. Have we yep. have any have we all seen Ghostbusters? I, I saw it at the art craft for the first time. Oh, nice. That so, is the perfect place to go. Nice. I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll write that down. Dude, how about we get the art craft to let us do that? Ah, but they probably wouldn't get the rights to show 2016 in there. They probably couldn't get the rights to do that. I don't know. Maybe we, I don't know we bring, a, bring a laptop. I can plug in my, my movies anywhere. So, so. Nice. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll yeah, Ryan, write that down. Yep. So, uh, so Ryan, we'll, we 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 might come back to Ghostbusters in a future uh, discussion. We'll probably do like a we'll do okay, we'll do three videos on Ghostbusters. Yep. We'll do a review of the first one, commentary slash review of 2016, and a general discussion about the Ghostbusters. Ghost yeah, Ghostbusters yep. franchise. Maybe we could even save it for Halloween. Yeah, like a like an October. Ooh. Yeah, do it. Write that down. So. Um. Yeah. So big plans coming. So big, so, big plans. And uh, if we have nothing else to say about the discussion, I um, think we've said. Let's I, call I, it I, Ghostover. I, yes. Okay. Um. I was I, I was actually going to segue into our content, but that kind of skips over our filmmaking topic. So, but uh, anyway, we're about twenty five minutes, and so if we have nothing else to to touch on for now, let's talk about music yeah. and how it can help or be a detriment to your film. Yeah. Yeah, so there is a prime example out there. I want you to look this up. I'm sorry to cut you off, Ryan. No, go ahead. I have a really good prime example uh, for you, and we put the, we will put this in the description. 
it is a video of the first time that you see Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean Ooh. when he's riding in on a ship. This is a prime example of how music can change and add to a scene. It, but this isn't a good example of how detrimental it could be, depending on your own personal interpretation. Yeah. The scene, it basically plays out, the original scene plays out it is, as it did. But then uh, it go, mutes the audio and puts different kind of music in it. Right. And even though you've seen that scene probably plenty of times if you're a big fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, the mood of that scene is changed, even though you, it's, the original has been so ingrained in your mind. Give it a watch. Yeah. And I'll be sure to show you guys after this recording. Yeah. But that's the that's the big idea of music. It can change. If you go with goofy music, if you go let's say you go with goofy music, the scene's going to be seen more comedically. You go with more suspenseful music. It can it can make the scene more suspenseful. Like and that's and that's the fairly obvious if you're going with a specific mood of a music, the film is going to be that particular mood. But sometimes you can use that, but sometimes those two can clash. Yeah. Another example um, is, like, I've recently watched the Super Duper cut of Deadpool 2 um, at the towards the very end of the movie. Um, I won't give away too much detail on it, um, but there's a sequence when um, they're all kind of, like, slow-mo running into uh, a fight sequence. Um, I think that's as vague as I can get mm -hmm. um, on that. And they're playing... Uh, a really like it's kind of like a, a harder rap song um so you kind of but it's more intense um in that's in the theatrical cut but then in the super duper cut they're playing fly like an eagle so it the scene comes across completely different right I bet, I bet i bet a bit more funny because uh, music can actually serve as a big juxtaposition yeah. if you're doing something comedically Get get music that doesn't fit the scene, and sometimes it'll that juxtaposition will make it even funnier. Yeah, and uh, a good example of it of it, you know, improving a scene. Two examples of plays: Star Wars, any of the movies, and Back to the Future. So, um, like, uh, so go with, with Star Wars is like, let's go back to seventy seven, the nineteen seventies. You know, there were science fiction was like, you know, all synths. There was like synthesizer rock music and everything in movies. You know. Of how movies were back then. Flash Gordon, even it, though that came af afterwards, but that is a prime example of rock. Oh yeah, hmm. and um, so and then that was the first Star Wars was kind of the first movies in a while at that point to have like this big classical orchestral score by the great Johnny Williams. And so. fun fact, um, you know uh, the Fox logo, mm -hmm. the little fanfare that it has. Uh, John Williams actually composed the opening to Star Wars in the same key as the Fox, the 21st Century Fox fanfare. Interesting. I didn't yep. know that. So I think it was a B sharp, I believe. Hmm. That's that's interesting. Um, but yeah, that's that is interesting. Let's say, um, and uh, uh, another and the touch on Back to the Future, you know. You know, that's also kind of the first movie in a while because, like, you know, if you know the story of Back to the Future, you know how hard it was to get that movie made, you know. You know, because there was all raunchy comedies in the, nowadays, that back then in the early 80s. Um, but then Back to the Future came out and had this big orchestral score as well as a great soundtrack by Huey Lewis and all kinds of other period music from Definitely. back in the day. So um, it's, it's interesting because I think about, you know, The Power of Love. Favorite song of all time, hands down. So, um, I gotta get back in time. Yeah, back in time, mm -hmm. great song. Um, is like I think about that skateboard scene in the at the beginning of the first movie, Back to the Future, and I'm just like, hmm. I just like I keep watching it. I'm just like, why does this work? Why is this so enjoyable and charming? And I've got another scene that kind of that's kind of in the same vein. Like, um, usually a lot of movies nowadays will do a scene like that where it's got a period song like like take any war movie set during vietnam what song do they use fortunate son yeah family guy has pointed out that how nearly every vietnam movie yeah. uses fortunate yeah. son yeah, in that, some capacity that, that, made, that made me think about um full metal jacket like hello my sweetheart hello vietnam uh or um uh, paint it black by the rolling yeah, stones and, uh, the bird is the word that's a great that's that like I don't know like they I guess that's like Stanley Kubrick's an example of like the music in there it's just like 
how does this work? But it does. How, how is it working? Like, like that, for those who don't know the movie, <laughs> the bird is the word. I won't go into spoilers for the movies for who hasn't seen it. No, there's really not much in there to uh, spoil. Uh, but uh, for those who haven't seen it, see it. It's one of Stanley Kubrick's great best films. Ryan, have you seen it? Which one is it? Full Metal Jacket. I haven't seen it yet. It's on Netflix. Watch I need it. To watch By it. the way, I'm giving you my Netflix. Okay. But, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, um, Tom mentioned the use of bird as the word by yeah. the trash men. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick's choice to use that song comes right out of nowhere, but it yeah. works because it kind of alleviates the moment because it actually comes after a bit of a, a bit of a scrimmage yeah. during the war. Yeah. And it works to kind of transition yeah. us, transition yeah. us into a lighter part of the movie. Yeah. And then also at the end of the movie, they're... And is this a spoiler? And are you talking about them singing the Mickey Mouse Club theme? Okay, well, now you just said what I was going to say. But yeah, yeah, they're singing, singing the Mickey Mouse Club. Oh, so, uh, okay. So it's it's like, huh. But you know, if you see the movie, you kind of understand it. You kind of have to think about, okay, yeah. Historical context. Yeah. And, it, it, it and the context seem, of the scene that just happened. Yeah, and it doesn't seem glaring like, oh, they chose that music because it's period music. Like this is, yeah, this this song yeah. came out during that time, which I think King of the Crystal Skull in the beginning kind of suffers from, mm-hmm. because outside of the fact that they're just on, racing on a dirt yeah. road listening yeah. to Elvis Presley's "You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog," yeah, I think that it, that scene's that scene is weaker compared to power of love scene and back yeah, to the future but I, i'm still thinking about like what we just talked about i was like how does this work you know because it's like you know Hue, huey lewis talking about power of love it's like <laughs> it tie, i think it just i think it ties more into the movie's themes yeah i guess and like because it ties more into like the later scene when he like you know when him and jennifer part ways for now but and like, then it plays plays him out again. Like, then it, it's more contextual there. Mm-hmm. But it's like in the beginning scene, it's like, I guess it's kind of more like a way to like kick you into the movie, even though it's like five minutes in. So, yeah. Um, which that's a whole other uh, topic for probably another probably like a commentary or something like or a review of Back to the Future. How how well that movie works or how how that flows like how that script just moves. Also so. for the fact that it's Huey freaking Lewis, man. Yeah. Can't yeah. go wrong. No. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess let's touch on like how music can be a detriment to films. Um, uh, I'm trying the, to... A glaring example of me is uh, the cinematic version of It. Um, some of the scary moments is I was like, okay, where it's supposed to be scary, like when he's coming out of the garage. It's like, okay, music, shut the hell up. Like, let it be, like, let it be quiet for a bit. I can see what you mean. I thought you were going to talk about uh, one of the kids being a fan of the Backstreet Boys. I thought it was New Kids on the Block. Oh no, it was New Kids. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that that that's a whole. Other, that's another thing. I forgot about that. Well, I, I found it interesting that they jumped that movie. They shifted the movie up to the 1980s. Oh, they, oh yeah, they did. Yeah, because one of the bullies has a Metallica "Metal Up Your Arse" huh. shirt. I, th- I thought they. Were... Because the, the original one took place in the 50s. Yes, it did. Hmm. And then it kind of fast forward to the 80s? Yes. So hmm. Roughly about there. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, but outside of that time shift in the cinematic version, the movie is essentially the same as the book. Hmm. Well, anyway. Um, but back to what we were talking about? Yeah, it's like, because they often, like, the music's just used in inappropriate times. Um, it's like, I'm trying I'm, kind of blanking on what to how to like oh i've got a good example i've got a good example it's like really pointless really pointless 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 friday the 13th the remake there's this there's a scene in the opening uh spoilers uh, spoilers for a uh friday the 13th movie somebody dies Mm -hmm. there's a i won't give con i won't give context to where the scene is there's a part in the movie where this guy is walking (laughs) out into the woods and uh, he's listening. To, he puts his headphones in because he's just stormed off from the campfire. Well, yeah. didn't storm. He just walked away. And it, uh, what was the song? It, it, it was a pop song. I can't remember it, but I, it probably come to me if I heard it. But it was so out of place because he puts his headphones on. He starts jamming out to the music, and then it fades out because he notices a bunch of pot leaves and then somebody's severed ear. I'm like, right. was that really necessary? Did you? 
did, did you buy the rights to that song and you had to put it in somewhere? Right. So, anyway, that's that's interesting. Um, Ryan, can you think of any examples? Um, not of one where it's not necessarily like like music being inappropriate, but right. uh, I don't know if either of you have seen A Quiet Place. Um, but like at the very beginning of the movie, it's very intense. And I think the reason why is because the tension is built because there's really no sound. So sometimes you can do your scenes justice by not always adding sound to it. Like not every scene needs audio, audio. not every scene needs music overlaid with it. Right. Of course. And the opposite can be true as well. Like uh, Halloween, when it went to test audiences without the iconic score that it has, it didn't do so well. Right. It was the addition of that music that helped yeah. that helped give it its edge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just thought of something. Um, go, 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 go. The go. Outsiders. Um, for those who follow my YouTube channel, it's my most viewed video ever. I'm feeling your um, bring that up. Yeah, there's the 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 the, the theatrical cut and the director's cut. Uh, there were times, uh, I can't believe I didn't think of this, there were times, um, now the director's cut, in my opinion, is better. There's some, like, soundtracks that say, okay, you could have, like, used it from the uh, theatrical one, but for the most part, the, 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 act, the director's cut is better. And a glaring, a perfect example of that is when the, the Pony Boy, Soda Pop, and, um, Dairy reunite in the hospital. In the theatrical cut, it's this over-the-top, orchestral thing but i'm just like eh, this is just manipulative and on top of you know not being able to you know, you're not connecting with these characters we could probably go more into this in a, like a whole other video like we might do like a commentary or a review of that so um but you know and then in the director's cut of that same scene it's just like a like a slow like strum of a guitar song or something i don't know what i don't know what the actual song is called but and i'm just like wow this is a lot better so so um and, and like i said this in my video like uh, the 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 music and the director or the theatrical cut felt like it was manipulative so and it's like okay here here this is where you feel like feel relieved and united or you're, this is where you're supposed to cry and but then in the director's cut it's like it it's more effective because it's more subtle it just lets the atmosphere play out because you believe the song is just kind of playing in the background of the hospital you know what i mean so Kind of reminds me of how everyone criticizes Full House because they have that that piano track for when you're supposed to feel sad. <laughs> yeah, or like uh, Saved by the Bell. Like, do do do. Well, guys, have you? Um, uh, never, I, don't, I can talk about that. Later. I can talk about that later. Unrelated to this, but oh, I'm trying to think of a really. I'm trying to think of an example where the music of a film just destroyed it. Hmm. hmm. And I can't. Uh, I'm sure there, there definitely exists something, but um, film that destroys. Me. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or nah, 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 nah. That's a. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll touch on like how like orchestral stuff hasn't really been like a big thing, or like there hasn't been really any memorable tracks like other than Star Wars, which, you know, John Williams is always fantastic. Um, even, like, uh, Rogue One, I think, uh, my, I know Michael Giacchino did that score. Um, he's an awesome, you know, he's the same person who did um, The Incredibles. And Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. Um, and uh, I know a lot of people didn't remember that, but it's like, there's some stuff where I was just like, wow, I just, I listen to this all the time. So, and he only had, like, four weeks to do it. So, because they had, a, they had another guy, and then I don't know what happened. I guess he had to, like, Little uh, back away, I don't for some reason I don't know. And they got Mike Giacchino in, and uh, he did. It, I think he could have done better um, because like throughout Rogue One there was a lot of like repeating, but like when it was used like you know where it was like exclusively used it was fantastic. So, so um, but um, yeah, but the only other movie franchise for with a orchestral piece that I can remember is Avengers. Because mm-hmm. you know that that you know that theme is awesome. So. Yeah, like the the big thing that comes to mind out of that film is obviously um, the uh, during the Battle of New York, the big cinematic oh, spin yeah. around shot yes. where you're, everybody yeah. finally assembles. Yeah, and I think that's uh, I, I think that I think this should this should have been said back in the cinematic universes discussion, but I, Marvel has had an image that they were building up to, and it was that image in yep. New yep. York. Yep. Yep. 
and everything came together. But I just thought of an example for music that destroys a movie. What? When it's just there to sell a soundtrack. Oh. Your Smurfs. Your oh. Trolls. Oh. oh. No me own. Suicide Squad. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. I, I didn't... I will give you that. Like yeah. uh, like Eminem's uh, uh, Without Me, just coming out of nowhere. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like they gave it to a guy, like, okay, put music behind this movie. Put put music that we bought, that we bought the rights to. Put it in this movie. Yeah, and, and then do. you've got, I'm looking it up now to list, let's see how many people are on one track. It's the Sucker for Pain. It has Lil Wayne, Wiz Khalifa, Imagine Dragons, Logic, Ty Dollar Sign, and X Ambassadors, all in one track. Though I will admit the uh, Panic at the Disco cover of Bohemian Rhapsody is really good. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, Though they used the uh, Queen version in the trailers, from what I remember. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, and I think music can all uh, music can also be deceptive, deceptive, especially in a trailer sense, because having bohemian rhapsody with uh suicide squad's trailer that really made me think this is gonna be this is gonna be something this is like Meh. this is gonna be a sight to behold yeah like they're like they're being they're kind of they're kind of being wacky but at the same time yeah doing their thing but then we it saw the actual really, movie it was just really confused you know but um yeah oh that, another example guardians of the galaxy working really well all know? right yeah, I own cassettes of yeah. both soundtracks yeah. as well as CDs, yeah. and I'm debating on buying them on vinyl. Yeah, I, it also has to do with the selection of the song. I oh think. yeah, I, with the Guardians of the Galaxy, they had a plot reason for all that for all that music to be playing. Because he's a kid from what seventies or eighties. Yep. yep, from Missouri. And, yeah. Yep. His mother made his mother made him cassette cassette mixtapes of all pop songs from the seventies and eighties. Yeah, so and that was all he had for a long time. Yep, that, that, that's all he has. Yep, when he doesn't. But now that he's back to Earth, I'm I'm interested to see what they do. Yeah, now that he's back on Earth with all those years of the music industry. Now well, is he back on Earth? Wait, wait uh, no, 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 wait. I, I, and then I, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. What if I'm you saying. if if most people who are probably listening to this have already seen the movie, so as of this current moment in the MCU, uh, he's kind of in a dustpan. Yeah, sorry, I sorry. forgot. I it's forgot okay. Infinity War there for a second. So. He'll get to Earth eventually. I can figure that. I can yeah. I can guess that. Yeah. It'd be interesting because I remember yeah. in uh, the Winter Soldier cap. Having his book of stuff that he had to catch up on, and yeah. Pink Floyd's "The Wall" was on there. Yeah, yeah, and then like at the end of Guardians Two, he gets the uh, the Zune, yeah. which so far I have a playlist of it of like everything that's actually on there on that Zune is um, the Father and Son by Cat Stevens um, played at the end of Guardians Two, um, the Spinners song "The Rubber Band Man" and. Uh, Ace Freely's New York Groove. Hmm. So there, there's a lot on there that they can just kind of that that was their their cop out um, yeah. to get. I'll say this: not they, having to make another one. I'll say this: if they if some, <laughs> there's one song that no that I think because of the reputation it has, you can never put it in the film. Like you could, you run the risk of people being taken out of the film uh, if you use it. All Star by Smash Mouth. <laughs> it only worked in Shrek. It uh, only yeah. worked in Shrek. Yeah. Praise Shrek. It's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a great comedy. Second ones. But oh, whatever. Different, different, different video. Different video. Different, um, different strokes for different yeah. folks. But yeah, you could not use. I don't. I don't even think if they. I don't know why they would do it, but I. I don't think they could pull using All Star and. Guardians of the Galaxy, considering the reputation yeah. both it has with Shrek now. Yeah, unless they made a Shrek reference. <laughs> or make like a joke to it, or nod to it. But like, even then, call, it's like... Like they, like they could resurface an old Michael Eisner joke that he had about DreamWorks called Dream Jerks Animation. Oh, God. Yeah, Michael Eisner did not like DreamWorks because Cats and... Now that's a whole Disney, piece of oh, Disney yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Katzenberg, the man who founded DreamWorks, yeah. 
not a big fan and he of wore, he, he was uh, the head of Disney for a while. Yes, he was behind the early Disney Renaissance. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's about our time. We're at twenty minutes. So um, and if we have anything else to say. I think okay, I think that's about it. All right, we're good. So let's uh, move on to our final segment, uh, the upcoming content of the future. So Dylan, you've For got those something. who aren't familiar with my channel, I've been trying to get <laughs> off the ground a little review series called According to Von Isner. The name takes itself from this piece of media being accorded to me, Mr. Von Isner, because that is the name of my YouTube channel. Uh, for those who are confused by that name, uh, Von Isner is my old family, my old family Austrian name. Oh, really? Yep. Hmm. We were known as the Von Isners. Uh, two brothers came over from there, came over from Europe after World War One. Met in New York, shook each other's hand, and then one came down here to the Midwest, and that's why my family's here in the Midwest. Interesting. Yep, it's cool. But the whole premise of the show is that I—it's basically the uh, nostalgia critics' uh, clip list reviews, except mm -hmm. a lot more critical. Like, uh, there's not too many. There's not. It's not a whole skit throughout the entire review. It's just mm -hmm. me commenting on things in a particular piece of medium. So far, it's been video games, like a certain game mechanic that isn't uh, up to snuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's just me flailing around in front of a camera. Right. So um, that's another thing. We got. I've actually got my first movie review coming up, and it's gonna be a doozy. Right. So Tom's just gonna love it. Uh huh. Anyway. Uh. So. Uh, Ryan, you've got uh, your blue Blu ray hunt, which I guess all three of us can do, right? Definitely. Yeah, so the one that I'm working on, um, I've had some issue getting the footage from my phone yeah. to the MacBook, um, but I should have it all ready to go here pretty soon as um, the Blu ray hunt and review of Avengers Infinity War mm. um, went out this last Tuesday to purchase the 4K and the Steelbook. Um, right. So I'll be showing those off on camera here shortly. Nice. Yes. So, um, and yeah, I'll probably do like a Blu-ray hunt uh, next week. So uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna set aside some time here for too long to pre-record videos to put on this channel because I've also got to do keep my channel up to date. Um, so that'll be cool. Uh, I've got a couple other stuff lined up for the for the round table. So um, yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah. So Dylan, would you uh, any or do we have anything else? Sorry. Nope, uh, I think that's, that's about it, my man. So, all right, yeah, so... Um, Thank you again, everybody, for coming yeah. to the Filmmaker's Roundtable. Please, 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 oh, please, if you would like us to cover anything, please put it in the comments. We've actually had a viewer posting a few things that we should check out in the comments. I just checked this recently. <laughs> that that guy came from me. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I, I could tell. He's yeah. got a lot of your videos liked. Yep. Thank, yep. Uh, thank you, good sir. We'll be checking out your comments here soon. But for those of you who haven't left a comment and you would like us to talk about something that's either upcoming that should be on our, li on our list to be watching out for, or something retro, like a classic that has been long forgotten from time, or just hasn't gotten the recognition or attention that it probably did or didn't deserve, be sure to leave that in the comments. Any special links or things that we have talked about specifically, like that Halloween teaser music, will be in the description below, along with links to our Twitters, our YouTube accounts, and if you haven't followed our Facebook page, you can follow the link below to it. We'll and be posting updates there every, every so often. And follow our iTunes. Exactly. We are on iTunes. And all of our episodes will be appearing on there once we can uh, work out the space issue on SoundCloud. Yes. And as always, this podcast will be coming out every Monday here on SoundCloud. And if you're watching this on YouTube, mon every Monday on YouTube. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks for watching this week's episode, guys. Make sure to follow us on SoundCloud and iTunes, as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages. Don't forget to subscribe to The Roundtable, as well as our personal YouTube channels, all the links of which will be provided in the description. Thanks, guys, and we will see you on the next episode of the Filmmakers Roundtable.